So today we're going to take a look at a little experiment with effusion. Some people say diffusion. I like to just talk about molecular velocities or speeds. Um, I have here a very high-tech piece of equipment. You don't need this dial's head, but you can use this. You could easily use a beaker instead of this dial's head. I just happen to like using this for various and sundry reasons. Now, this is probably not in the Flynn catalog, so if you want to get one of these, you just have to mention two words. Those two words are extra credit. Kids will sell their grandmother for extra credit. In fact, I was thinking of Mike and all my homework extra credit. That way they may actually do it, but that was just an idea that crossed my mind. Here we have a porous cup. Now, you may, this is a clean one. This has obviously been an abused one, but it still works for what I want. You may have these laying around your lab, and you may have admired them over the years, going, I wonder what the heck that is. I'll just leave it there. It's a porous cup. It's got billions and billions of little holes in there, small holes, so gas can diffuse across here in and out, or you can use them in uh, electro electrochemical cells to generate electric current by putting various solutions on one side and the other, but we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to take this dial's head, and this is our control, and we're just simply going to put it over this. And again, you can do this with a beaker if you wish. And what do you see happening here? Nothing. This is a wash bottle. And let me take it apart, whoa, to show you that. That was a nice sound. Okay, there we go. This is simply a couple of stoppers, and it stays on there. And there's an opening here. Okay, glass tube. And I'm putting this on and putting this in, and there's just, for lack of anything better, I picked a yellow fluid. I'm not sure why. And here I have some hydrogen gas in a tank under pressure. And I'm going to fill this with hydrogen gas. Now, hydrogen gas, as you know, is less dense than air. And again, this is not how I would present it to my students. As to my students, I would present this as a problem. That is, I would fill this up. I say, I'm going to fill this up with hydrogen gas. Which way should I do it? This way, this way, or this way. There's a problem right there. And of course, you would want to do it this way, hydrogen gas being less dense than air. We can flush out the head. So let me turn this on slowly. Okay, ooh. Now you're saying, how can you tell when it's filled? Well, it'll, hydrogen gas will feel at a slightly different temperature. It'll feel cooler. There you go, I'm feeling lightheaded. Now I'm going to take the hydrogen gas. We've seen the control, absolutely nothing happened. I'm putting this on. There we go. Gee whiz, look at that. That is amazing. That fluid is being forced out of the bottle onto the tabletop. Now, there's a puzzle for your students to explain that. It wasn't simply the act of putting the head on, because we, we tried that earlier and nothing happened. It was the fact that there was hydrogen gas in there. Now, if we had used sulfur hexafluoride, there's something for you to do the dot structure of. If we had sulfur hexafluoride, the opposite would happen. Instead of coming out here, you would see it actually bubbles coming in as the air would come in and go up. So what's going on here? Well, um, some people, again, might call this diffusion. Let's talk about it in terms of molecular velocity and molecular mass. Right here we have a formula. It's called Graham's Law of Diffusion or Effusion. Some people get it confused, so they call it Graham's Law of Confusion. That's the molar mass of two gases. The square root of that is inversely proportional to the speed of the molecules. So what's going on here, and what you would try to get your students to do, is to realize that when I put the hydrogen gas over the top, the molecules would go through the small openings faster, the hydrogen molecules would, than the air would go out to try to um, bring the two to the same concentration. So the hydrogen gas molecules are going through faster than the air is coming out, so pressure builds up inside here. This forces the fluid down because hydrogen molecules are much lighter. They move at a much faster velocity, so they have the same kinetic energy at a given temperature. You're really using the idea that at a given temperature, all gas molecules have the same kinetic energy. And that's worth talking about, especially in AP chemistry, because that oftentimes appears on the AP test. So 
I would use this when I'm talking about molecular motion, kinetic energy, and Graham's law. If you don't have the dial's head, you can use a beaker, so let's actually uh, try it with the beaker. So here's our setup. We have a yellow fluid. It could be any color that you like. I happen to like yellow. That's why I have the yellow Mold Day t-shirt on. What other reason would I be wearing that? Um, I'm going to fill this up. So here it goes. And again, you can actually sense when you get to the right level, it'll feel cooler. Notice I'm filling it up again from the bottom. Okay, I think we're there. I'll find out by actually doing the experiment. I'm lowering the beaker over it. Holy cow, it still works. That's amazing. It's reproducible, so it must be true. And you could use helium gas. If you don't have hydrogen, you can go to the drugstore, get a helium-filled balloon, and do it with helium gas. Take it off. Ah, we're already below the level of the glass thing, so we're done. Okay, thank you.